Welcome to IdeaGen TV. Today, I am honored to have with us Chris Nicolopoulos, Vice President for Government Relations at Enhanced Health. Such an exciting day to be talking about healthcare. And before we go on our interview, I'd like to talk a little bit about your work, Chris. You've been involved with Enhanced Health, and before that, you were heavily involved in healthcare and health insurance within the New Hampshire state system as the former commissioner of the New Hampshire Insurance Department. Could you kindly tell us briefly about your experiences within the government? And then specifically relating to the healthcare component that you led and then working at Enhanced Health now and how, the, how does it all this apply to your daily work today? So I've been, um, I've been in the insurance industry in New Hampshire for 15 or so years primarily representing insurance companies and insurance agents uh, in their interactions with either state government or um, with the regulators. Um, in 2020, Governor Christian Nunu asked if I would consider accepting his nomination to be an insurance commissioner for the state. It was something that I was happy to do. And in March of 2020, I was uh, confirmed as the insurance commissioner. Uh, unfortunately, just 10 days later, uh, we shut down uh, the country when the COVID-19 crisis started. And so, and for all of the time I was insurance commissioner, we were dealing with going into and out of uh, a global pandemic. The insurance marketplace in New Hampshire is interesting in that it's not large. It's less than a half a percent of the insurance marketplace in this country. And the way you regulate an industry like that in a state like New Hampshire is one that's driven by uh, allowing uh, insurance companies to be uh, creative in the market, allow them to rate products appropriately. Uh, we would educate consumers and hopefully they would find the best products with each other. Uh, it was a very uh, business friendly and consumer centric uh, relationship. But during the time I was at the insurance department, we became increasingly worried about uh, the effects of a three-year public health emergency, and then ultimately how we were going to come out of the public health emergency and ensure that people continued to have access to health insurance. Uh, during that time, while I was insurance commissioner, I was introduced to several of the executives from Enhanced Health, and they were really thought partners of ours, helping us look at ways that we potentially could come out of uh, the public health emergency, the way we could deal with reaching the underserved, uh, the underserved as it relates to health insurance. Uh, and when my term was up, I looked to Enhance Health uh, as a partner for potential future career growth. And so I moved there in July of this year. Chris, that was an incredible dose of perspective. My gosh, it's incredible to hear your journey and what, what is happening right now at Enhance Health looks to set the game. You're looking to have significant impact on the healthcare brokerage industry. And I'd love for our global audience for you to describe how Enhanced Health looks to make the brokerage and insurance landscape just simply easier to navigate. Wouldn't that be great? And you're doing it. Yeah. Uh, not only are they poised to make an impact, but they already are making an impact. Over the last 30 months, Enhanced Health has, uh, has helped consumers in the United States, over a million consumers in the United States, acquire insurance through the ACA federal marketplace. Those are numbers that have just never been able to be achieved by a single agency. Um, I think uh, Matt Herman, our CEO and, and our partners, Bain Capital, uh, have provided the resources such that we can uh, target these, uh, these traditionally underserved communities and provide them easy access to uh, agents that are willing to help walk them through uh, the, the ACA enrollment process, uh, because it's not just about picking a plan, really. It's about picking the, a plan that's right for each consumer. And so our sales agents might be talking to one person about ensuring that the plan they purchase has their doctor in it, or that the plan they purchase has the prescription drug that they're on in a formulary at a copay that is appropriate. Um, some of these folks have been in for in long periods of, of not having insurance, but others have had it and making sure they get the right product with the right federal subsidy 
is uh, is a uh, kind of a hallmark of what we're able to do for those for those folks. Well, in in so in your own words, how would you describe the value and benefits to the communities Enhanced Health is trying to reach that healthcare brokerage brings to the industry as a whole, given the current landscape surrounding healthcare and ultimately insurance? Yeah, I think Enhanced Health kind of blazed a path where we we found out how you could build an agency of size that could that could help this many people. But one of the other kind of value propositions that we have, uh, besides helping people get the right product, is we have a 400 member customer service team, uh, all W two employees in our Florida facilities, that uh, that that continual relationship with our insured clients and customers after the sale. And so one of the things that we've been working on in some states over the last uh, year is helping these folks who haven't traditionally had relationships with their with doctors, actually scheduling that first visit with a PCP that is currently accepting um, new patients. And we did this in conjunction with um, practice groups that were willing to accept new folks, uh, health insurers that wanted our help in making that bridging that transition for them and uh, being there to offer services to our customers. Uh, that's part of our commitment not to have our relationship end at the sale, for it to be a long-term relationship between a insurance agent and a, a customer. You know, Chris, that, that's remarkable. And, and to hear about the interaction between those areas is really profound. And profound as well is the involvement of Bain Capital. You alluded to that earlier in this interview. And I'd like to ask you, as one of the, what appears to be one of the most important moments in terms of funding for Enhanced Health with a $150 million Bain Capital investment in 2021, how have you seen this investment and in support from Bain manifest itself into current ventures and impact? Yeah, I, uh, Bain Capital is a tremendous partner. Um, and they had the foresight three years ago uh, to meet Matt Herman and then to compile a number of small uh, small businesses that ultimately became an enhanced health. Um, they also were able to pivot that business during uh, during the public health emergency to make sure we were we were providing ACA availability to members. But I think the number one thing that a Bain provides to us is instant credibility. As an insurance, uh, as a former insurance commissioner, if someone comes to me and says I'm a, from Enhanced Health and a Bain Capital portfolio company, you instantly know who that is. Uh, in addition to uh, to the instant credibility, Bain Capital also has provided us access to capital to grow. Uh, but also as we grow, they've provided us uh, operational support. Uh, you you don't grow a company from a hundred million dollar investment to being worth you know several billion dollars without the backroom support of a, a true uh, corporate uh, partner. That's exactly right. That support the fuel literally the fuel for your growth at Enhanced Health. That's remarkable. And I'd like to talk about remarkable. You have recently made some profound, some incredible, some awesome partnerships with big names and brands, including Floyd Mer Merriweather, uh, of course, of boxing fame, the Dolphins, Miami Dolphins, Hollywood unlocks Jason Lee. How, how do you see these partnerships spreading the word in terms of awareness of the operations and impact of enhanced health going forward. Yeah, these partnerships are a, crit a critical element for us to reach our potential members, our members or our potential members where they are. And it may be at a boxing match or at the Miami Dolphins uh, stadium, but it may also be in uh, you know, the social media of a celebrity or an influencer. And so what we are trying to do and what we've been very effective in doing is when we run across these celebrities and influencers who care about the message and mission of getting people access to health insurance, we're able to partner up with them. We're able to help them spread a word, spread the word of, you know, preventative health care, of prenatal health care, of getting access to insurance and having the solution, 
you know, call Enhanced Health. They have a thousand agents available to answer your call and help you walk you through the process of getting insurance. And so this is just part of our commitment to meet our members where they are. Well, and as we chatted about briefly earlier in this interview, a major element of Enhanced Health mission is aiding and creating this more universal environment to access healthcare. And you've done this incredibly utilizing digital services and what I love, which is a simplified process for your clients. Having been founded just a few years ago in 2021, the pandemic and healthcare issues at the time inspire this direction for this company? And do you think the pandemic ultimately will change the nature of the industry to become more remote? I think uh, I think the pandemic did change the industry uh, in part because the Inflation Reduction Act changed uh, subsidy limits, um, but also in part because our customers across this nation want to access access to health insurance how they're more comfortable. And so we have people who want to call an agent and be walked through the process, but we also have folks that want to use a technology or a website or an app to do the same thing. And so in in that vein, this year we purchased an EDE, which is a, a, a mechanism for direct enrollment, enhanced direct enrollment in the federal marketplace so that we can create an interface for members who wish to do that purchase decision, at least in part on their own or completely on their own, so that they can seamlessly acquire a, a policy through that. Um, and I think uh, you know we'll continue to embrace technology such that, uh, that that people are asking us to. But ultimately, uh, this is complicated. Insurance is complicated, and it's critical that these folks have the ability to pick up the phone and say, "Help me understand my subsidy," or "Help me understand these different plan options that I have," uh, because because ideally we want them to get into the right product. And so we move to government. We're all talking about government. This is an election year. There's a lot of focus on government. And your role is vice president of government affairs and enhanced health, yeah. which is a very seminal role within the context of everything that's happening in enhanced with regulations and on and on. Chris, can you describe how enhanced health plans or does work with government hand in hand uh, to help with specific states and potential new areas we talked about ai moving forward yeah i think you know one of the interesting things about them hiring me to, to run this program for them is that i have a, a long-standing relationship with insurance commissioners across the nation so when, when i was commissioner i would meet with the 50 other state commissioners every three months or so um, to talk about you know uh, new issues that we're all dealing with in our states. Most of these insurance companies work in multiple states, and it's it's appropriate for us to be talking about how we're going to uh, how we're going to regulate those companies together, and so that none of us are recreating the the wheel. Uh, an important part of my transition, and the reason I chose to come to Enhance, is because they were going to allow me to continue to cultivate those relationships with my colleagues at N NAIC, which is the Association of Insurance Commissioners. And so we've been positioning ourselves over the last seven months as an expert in the individual market in the ACA to these regulators so that we're at a point now when a state regulator has a question about how things are working for their constituents in their state as it relates to the individual marketplace or a special enrollment period or marketing that they're seeing. They can call me up and talk to our, our team about uh, issues they're having. Uh, and our willingness to have that relationship with each of the state regulators extends also to our federal regulators. We meet uh, regularly more than once a month with our CMS uh, regulators and our societal regulators to talk about those same issues. Uh, we're all very happy that this year there are three and a half million more enrollments in the uh, in the individual marketplace. Uh, you know, we've crested now 20 million people, uh, but there are a number of folks that that we've still not accounted for as it relates to Medicaid redetermination, uh, folks that were covered during um, the public health emergency on Medicaid and have not or are not continuing to be eligible. And so those are things that I'm still very concerned about. 
You know, that's incredible. And I, and I, you know, applaud your work uh, in engaging all these commissioners and states and trying to just make common sense decisions around everything that's happening. And so looking forward now, how do you see the healthcare industry? And by extension, the brokerage industry changing, yeah, I, you know, how is it changing? I think uh, the healthcare industry uh, is so critical. It's so critical to our economic stability, people having access to preventative care. Um, we don't want them just waiting till it's, it becomes an emergent uh, acute issue and heading to an emergency room. But I think the things that we're seeing on the ground are uh, our states trying to grapple with how to deal with um, new mandates. You know, should this should this form of medical treatment be covered? Should it be covered with or without a copay? Uh, should there be caps on things like insulin copays, um, prescription drugs, and and for for the regulators in large part of the state or or federal to understand the impact on the market when you change the the, the mix of mandatory coverages. I think one of the things I'm proudest of that I've watched happen in our marketplace over the last few years, and I, I, I I'm watching it you know, kind of spread across the nation is mental health parity. I think the work that the federal government, Department of Labor and state regulators have done to ensure that uh, that insured people in this country have equal access to mental health care and uh, the same as they would for medical surgical. And those, you know, those kind of measures of success are both quantitative and qualitative. You know, do you have the same number of visits? Are your co-pays the same? But it's also things like, are the insurers paying a fair uh, a fair rate, a uh, fair contracted rate to these service providers in the different in the different fields? And I think we're going to see a lot of movement in those places, and, and that's going to have a direct impact on the actual cost of premiums going forward. Well, Chris, I, again, I I want to say thank you for all you're doing. You're truly changing the game. You're changing the world, especially in this area of healthcare and brokerage and insurance. I mean, it's so critical for the millions of people across the nation that are looking to your company to help them solve this riddle, because oftentimes it appears to be a riddle. Mm. And, you know, there's not a lot of time to solve the riddle. I think you have the tools, you've built an incredible company and enhanced health. And I'd like to say thank you for that. And this is just the beginning of the conversation. We're going to invite you back because I know things are moving quickly. And I encourage everyone across the planet who's watching this interview to take a closer look at Enhanced Health. Chris Nicolopoulos, Vice President, Government Relations. Chris, how can folks find out more about this critical work at Enhanced Health? Yeah, I think uh, you can go to our website, enhancedhealth.com. You can uh, email me, uh, cnicolopoulos at enhancedhealth.com. Uh, and if you think that there's a place for us to be a partner with you and helping to reach out to folks who are underserved, who need access to uh, health insurance, or as a, a, a thought partner as it relates to uh, how to work together to get people insured, uh, reach out and we'll find the experts to, to meet with you. Chris Nicolopoulos, Vice President, Enhance Health. Thank you so very much. It's an honor and a privilege to have you on IdeaGen TV today. Thank you. I appreciate being here. Thank you.